Welcome everybody to the Red G Fox channel. And today we are doing episode breakdown. We just came up, man, last week we had one of the best ever and that is Lamont Goes African. Go check it out. I love that episode and that's such a fun breakdown. This one is pretty good. Uh, this is a Watt Side Story. A big play, as most of us know, on the great musical West Side Story. And it's even referenced in the episode. As far as where would I rank it, I wouldn't put it bottom 20, right? We talked about before, we're like, I think there's one of the episodes coming up, The Infernal Triangle. That's probably bottom 10 for me, one where I watch very little. But this one is not there. This is definitely not top 20 either. Unless it is one of your favorites, go ahead and put it in the comments. But this one is really good. Watch Side Story. IMBD gives it 7.4. We've covered other ones where they're like 7.8, 8.0. This is 7.4, and I feel this is a just rating for this episode. So in it, real quick, the summary to open it up is that Julio brings his fam <coughs> some family over, including his sister, Maria, who Lamont says, hey, you know what? I'm going to take her out around town. Let her get us a view of things and see what it's like to be in L.A. coming from uh, Harlem over New York. And what is he, what happens to Fred and Mrs. Fuentes? Both, none of them are really feeling too excited about the other one going out with the other one. So that's a summary on it. So let's get to fun facts. We got one and then two familiar faces. Let's get to those before we do the full episode breakdown. Fun facts, both, they, they reference both the LA and New York mayors. As Fred wants Mrs. Fuentes to go back, you know, to New York, he's kind of like, you know how long you stay in, you know. Did you ever hear of Sam Airplane Yachty? <laughs> Did you ever hear of John Garbage Strike Lindsay? <laughs> the, they both reference the mayors. The mayor of LA, Sam Yorty, he was nicknamed Airplane, Sam Airplane Yorty, because when he was mayor, they said 40% of the time he was out, not even in LA, he was out in other cities traveling and stuff. So that was his nickname, like, hey, you know what, this guy's never even here, what kind of mayor is that? And then Miss Fuentes, uh, Mrs. Fuentes references the New York mayor, that uh, John Lindsay, where he was John Garbage Strike Lindsay, and that's an actual fact to where he was had something wrong with the sanitation union and they didn't pick up trash and for nine days that you know after they failed to pick up trash just kept piling up in the streets and it was pretty bad so that is actual fact when they talk about that when you hear the reference to their names that's the whole story behind them why they call that so that is it for fun facts now let's get to familiar faces we got two of them we got alma beltran that who plays miss fuentes julio's mom she's been in several things including another episode remember the one where she comes uh, and makes uh, Mafunga, <laughs> Mafungo and Fred leaves, and she comes and, and makes it for him, and Fred gets all the people at the shelter to come back. So she does make a return appearance, and I do like her. I think she plays her character very well. But she was also in a thing called uh, Barangers, had eight episodes, so she was in that frequently. One of my all-time favorite shows, which I still watch to this day with my kids, and I've mentioned all the time, I love when we have uh, Sanford Sun guests in that, and that is Murder, She Wrote. She was in Knight Rider two different times, The Jeffersons two different times. So we see she's making a lot of reoccurring appearances in the Good Times, Chico and the Man two times. And fun fact, another bonus one, Chico and the Man actually uh, was on after Sanford and Son every Friday night. It was part of their killer block. And Chico and the Man for its time slot was one of the top shows. So she got to be in two of the top shows. So that's a lot of faces. That is millions, millions of faces that I got to see her. So big, these are two shows to be on. We did say the Jeffersons. Columbo. She was on Columbo two times. So that is it. And then she was on, I want to say, over 50 other shows and movies. So good career for her. Good career for uh, Alma Beltran. Now the next one, she goes by uh, Migdia. Uh, her last name, uh, Squats Guard. Chania. So she, but it, with a lot of things that I see when I look her up was... Uh, Migdia Chania, like that she, I don't know if it was from a marriage or maybe a, um, a, a previous name. Anyways, she didn't do too much acting after. She did do a few roles here and there. Her big thing was she went on to be a writer. Yeah, she wrote so many different things. We're going to cover on some of the things she wrote. And this is, oh, by the way, this is Julio's sister, Maria. She is Maria in this one. So when you go, you see her, know that she goes on to do a lot of different shows with writing. She went on to write short stories and series including for What's Happening Now, two different episodes. I love What's Happening Now. Two episodes. Uh, she did Punky Brewster, Different Strokes, Facts of Life, Incredible Hulk, three different episodes of Incredible Hulk, and a whole list of other shows. I mean, there's so many things I didn't even heard of. Up to 2020, she was still writing shorts and uh, miniseries and TV shows. 
So she has had a good long career when it comes to writing. So that's awesome. When you see that, I would have never thought that watching this. I would have thought, you know what? I don't see her. I don't remember her in too many other shows. So maybe she just left Hollywood or got out of it. Nope. She went behind the scenes and did writing. So that is it with the familiar faces. Let's get to the breakdown now. And I'm going to try to make it real quick on this one. All right, here we go to the breakdown section. And in this one, Fred, Fred comes out and he notices the truck's gone. And he tells him, where's the truck, man? Where? And he says, relax, I let Julio borrow it. Don't overreact. And Fred is pissed. He's like, why are you lending our truck to Julio? And he's like, why do you care so much? He's all, oh, because you're lending it to one of our competitors. Now he's got the truck, we got no truck. And he's and Fred's uh, Lamont's like, we don't even work. You know, we don't have, no, nothing's even happening today. And Fred, he's like, yeah. And it, on the seventh day, the Bible says to rest. I should rest, I should rest, and my truck should always be there. <laughs> so he claims it's for business related purposes, but we know that's not true. Then he's saying, you know, it's going to be a car accident. Uh, those people don't know how to drive. Those people aren't responsible. Those people, those people, and Lamont's like, what, what is, what's all this those people stuff? I never thought it was possible. I'm the son of a bigot. <laughs> so true he's like man i never knew i was my i was the son of a bigot and fred is showing uh, bigotry right here in this situation which he has throughout the show history but in the end fred usually learns a lesson um but he's not he's not happy and lamont's calling him on it and then all of a sudden they're talking about you know fred's like you know what if he's taking this a competition away there goes our whole empire and lamont's and it's one of the first times i remember him bringing up his empire right we talked about his thing in the past before like his business but he's calling this his empire and lamont's like what empire he's all this empire it's all gonna be yours you're gonna lose it so that's great if you if you can remember before put in the comments i don't remember him too many times talking about his empire up to this point what empire what empire this empire <laughs> So we hear a knock at the door and it's Julio and he comes in, he's all, ay, ay and he's saying all these thing, uh, things in Spanish and he's excited. And Fred's like, you brought the truck back in one piece. He's all, yeah, you know, and he's all, and just like Lamont said, he's all, I even filled up a tank full of gas. And Lamont's like, oh, you don't have to do that. Which, you know, you don't. When you lend the car out, it's nice, but you didn't have to. And Fred's all, yes, he did. <laughs> he's all, he sure is, you know, he wants it to. And so, especially with Fred, he thinks we shouldn't even let you the truck. So then he rushes out. He says, I got a surprise. I got to show you. And remember earlier, Fred had said like, they took it and he said the surprises be, he's gonna pull back that, that the canvas cover and there's gonna be a whole bunch of Mexicans that he snuggled, he smuggled over the border. Then he's saying over the border joint. So Fred's got all these things where he's thinking the worst of Julio. We've never seen Julio do any of these things. He's from America, he's an American. And Fred still bigotry, still unrightfully accuses Julio of being an immigrant and then smuggling them over. And then he's looking through the paper. I love that. But he's like, oh man, he said it's got to be hot trucks. You know, there had to be a, a riot or something because that, that thing's a whole, a bunch of uh, stolen tr uh, TVs. Then Julio comes in and he's got his family with him and we got to see what Fred's reaction is. <laughs> with me. <laughs> Fred, right? Only Fred's going to come with that reaction. And they, he gets to meet her and then it's it's nice. It's a good introduction. Fred's not too happy, but still he's like, okay. And they, they meet her. Julio's super excited. And then she's even, you know, she's dissing him. And you kind of feel bad. I feel bad for Fred. In an indoor junkyard. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't get why Lamont laughs. It's his house too. You know, he might look at his dad like, hey, you're in charge of cleaning up. But he's still got to feel responsible. And he's busting up as they're saying, she's never seen an indoor junkyard as well because it's just as bad inside as outside. And so they got there and they're visiting. And then I love the scene where they sit down and Fred or Lamont's like, hey, you stay here. We're going to get the stuff. Uh, me and Maria and Julio will unload it from the truck. And Fred's like, well, why don't we all go? And you comment below if you agree. I am right there. Sometimes you just meet people, the last thing you want is to just sit there and be awkward. Especially in Fred's situation where he's like, he doesn't even care to get to know them. He doesn't even want, he doesn't even like Julio that much. And now he's sitting there alone with Julio's mom. It's a very uncomfortable situation for Fred. As they, and Lamont's like, nah, let the old people relax. We'll go, the young people will do the work. So they take off and now you can see he's just looking over. He's got that smile. He's got that smile. He's trying to be polite. 
And they start talking and he's like, basically that's what we talked about with the fun facts where he's like, oh, you know, you staying long, you know, it, it, it's quicker on the way back because she's talking about how long it took to get here. Fred, you can see he's just totally tr already trying to get her out of there. And then he's saying, uh, you know, oh, your daughter's not going to like it. And he's like, why? And he's like, oh, you know, the, the guy's out here. And she's like, well, there's there's a lot of guys, you know, back in New York like that. He said, does he have any like, uh, and then she calls them paquitos. He said, oh, yeah, there's not a lot of uh, paquitos out here. And she's like, oh, no, the, you know, everything, it will, it'll be fine, basically. And then he says about the sweet, the, the lavio, the, is it, I can't even pronounce it, el lavios, because Fred's like, el lavios, el lavios. El novio. El novio. Yeah, well, see, in this neighborhood, all the new yo-yos is black yo's. <laughs> so the exchange is so good between them, from the paquitos to the labios, and you can see she's like, whatever, she doesn't, she just wants to get along and, and enjoy her time here while she's out there. Because New York, remember Fred's telling her about the smog, and she's like, New York's got smog, ah, but we have earthquakes. So it's not working. The next time we see it, it's Lamont comes over and he tells Fred, you know, it's just him and his dad now. And he's like, hey, I'm taking Maria out. <laughs> and he's like, what? What are you doing? He's like, I'm taking Maria out. And he's like, you know, why are you doing this? And he even does that. I love it when he's like, Elizabeth, this is the big one. I'm coming to join you. And I got an enchilada with him. <laughs> I'm coming to join you, honey. Got an enchilada on my heart. He does not want this, and we know this. Why he is it? Because he doesn't like Puerto Ricans. For some reason, even though it seemed like he buried the hatchet with Julio, he continues to hold this grudge towards their nationality. So we see now Fred Lamont's getting ready to do it, and Fred now, of course, like so many episodes we have seen, Fred now plays the victim. Oh, I'm sick. I'm not feeling good. You know, don't go out. And and Lamont's like, look, dude, I it, I'm not. I don't care. I'm taking her out. It's nothing big. We're gonna go out, have a good time. And he's taken to the Chinese restaurant that we saw in season one, uh, the second episode, Happy Birthday Pop. They're gonna go to that Chinese restaurant. And Fred's just playing the sick card. And then Julio comes over and he's super excited. He's like, hey, thank you. I just wanna say, I didn't wanna say in front of Maria, thank you for taking my sister out. And Lamont's like, hey, don't worry about it. And then we come to find out Mrs. Fuentes is not feeling as well, just like Fred. And Julio's like, man, you know, that's weird. My mom's not feeling as well. And he goes, she's probably, and Fred says, and this is, Fred is like poking a bear. He has to push. And he's like, she's probably has the same problem I have. And he's like, what's that? And he's like, your, uh, your sister going out with my son. And he's like, wait, 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 wait. And Julio, uh, Lamont's like, as always, trying to stop the war as he should. And he's like, hey, let's go, Julio. Let's go. Let's. He's like, no, no, no. What is it? Is she not pretty enough for you? And he's all, no. And he basically breaks it down and he finally gets to it. And I love when he goes, uh, maybe it's because she's Puerto Rico. See, si, senor. <laughs> to show the clip <laughs> she's not old enough no maybe mr sanford it is because she is a puerto rican si, senor. <laughs> <laughs> so once he does that he just goes off and it's not saying all this time but he still calls him basically a bigot in in, in spanish as as well he should julio is pissed Lamont is pissed, and Fred doesn't have, want to have any of it, but I think Fred does this because he wants to disrupt it. He wants to ruin the night because Julio didn't want it. It almost worked, but it did not. So we get to see Julio or Lamont, and and another thing I like to say, I'm so happy to have Julio back again. It's so nice to see Julio. You don't get him as much in season two. Season three, I feel like he's in more. So Lamont's ordering, and him and Maria are having a good time, and they're you know, going to get some food. And I love the, the, the waiter is always one of my all-time favorite when he comes up. And he's talking to him, and you remember Lamont's like, oh, you know, you know what they say, eat Chinese food, an hour later you're hungry. <laughs> it's like, you know what I always say, eat for an hour, then you won't be hungry again. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good, and the way he laughs, and Lamont's like, yeah, okay. And then he talks about, hey, after this, we'll go out, we'll put the windows down, you know, we'll go down PCH. And when you live out here, I live out in SoCal, it's good to hear, hey, I know PCH, I know exactly what he's talking about with the windows down, because she's like, hey, you don't have a convertible. But he's like, yeah, with the windows down, it's like the same thing. It is when you're flying down PCH near the coast. It is so much. So he's 100% correct on that. Um, and then we get to see Fred walking in, and it's super busy. And I love when the Chinese waiter, he's like, oh, and Fred's like, well, why is it so busy tonight? He's like, Jewish people like to eat Chinese food on Sunday. Why is that? Where's me? I'm not Jewish. <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my gosh. It, the interactions between them, even though they're so minimal, they're always parts that I love. And so he finds him a table with another person. And who is it other than Mrs. Fuentes, Julio's mom? They're both there for the same reason. And she's sitting there saying, if I see anything with them, those two, Basta. I'm going to say Basta. And it's like basically she's going to break it up, stop him, and doesn't want any part of that. And Fred's like, he's he's not happy either. And that's what I'm saying. The exchange is so good. We'll show a clip right here. Basta. Enough. Enough. I'm sorry my son was dumb enough to go out with your dog. And it's funny. It's a great interaction. It's great seeing Fred in, in his beret and he's got the glasses and the jacket and both of them trying to be incognito. And who comes up but one of the greatest of all time, Leroy and Skillet. Only their second appearance, but still. Two weeks ago, we saw them on the first one with Lena, with Lena Horn, And now they're here. And my gosh, when they come in, I already feel like they're longtime friends, you know, because we've seen them so much that it just feels like, and I'm excited. And Leroy, he's like, oh, what's going on here? You know, he's like, what you doing here, Fred? I know that you behind the dark glasses. And then, <laughs> and Skillet. They're both busting up, man. We gotta show a clip on here of this. And there she is. What you trying to do? Hi. <laughs> oh, I get it. It looks like Kukaracha time. Oh, man. <laughs> the fact I love that he calls him his, his Spanish teacher. Oh, a little of Kukaracha time. Oh, my gosh. This scene is probably, I know it sounds crazy, but it's probably my favorite. It makes me laugh more than any. There's some good ones in here. Like I said, when he comes in and he, the Chinese guy, the waiter makes the joke about, and I, I mean, there's a lot of little jokes like that. Nothing in this episode too often, other than a few scenes at the opening, make you bust up like other episodes laughing. But this what this whole scene when Leroy and Tila come in, I really think they elevate the episode as they elevate all of them. But this one really gets saved having them there because you feel like, man, you got Julio, his sister, his mom, Fred, Lamont, now Leroy and Skillet, the Chinese waiter. It's a good cast in this one. Uh, I, and it feels long. And that's what's weird is that there's nothing that in the whole episode where I'm busting up so much. But it still feels like a long, good, good episode. It's a good episode. But Leroy and Skillet take it to another level. When they say that and then, and then they look at it and he's like, why are you here? And then Fred's like, no, no, no. We're both here to spy on our kids. And then they're gone. <laughs> so now there's no credibility. They got no proof. And they're like, come on, uh, let's go skillet. Let's leave Fred alone with this lady. And, you know, they're going to have a good time and they take off. Fred, and now she's pissed. She's all, you made me miss them when they leave. And Fred's pissed too. And then they're like, all right, we're here. We might as well eat. And he comes to order and Fred's all, uh, separate checks, waiter. You know? Uh, might as well, because I'm here. And waiter, uh, separate checks. <laughs> <laughs> See, like that. that. That's such a simple line that we've all done. But it's so good here. Like, don't think I'm paying for you. We ain't on no date. Oh, my gosh. And remember when he sits down, I love him. He's all, oh, you guys know each other? You guys are friends? Oh, that makes it perfect. Oh, my gosh. That's probably my favorite scene, the whole Chinese restaurant in this episode. So it ends where Lamont comes home. He had a great time with Maria, and he's looking for his dad. And Fred comes down in his robe. And, man, I feel so sick. And he's selling it like a like no other, you know, like a used car salesman. He's trying to play it up for Lamont to make him feel bad, as he always does, as we will see in a few weeks when it's home for the aged. Uh, but... Then he gets a knock at the door, and Lamont's like, who, who are you expecting here? And in comes Leroy and Skillet. <laughs> he didn't tell you? Your pop was out with a real cutie. Yeah. And all the sisters in the neighborhood are going to feel cheated. <laughs> <laughs> the way he said that, he's like, oh, the sisters are jealous. You know, Fred's hooking up with this Spanish cutie. Oh, my gosh. It's a great ending right there. And Lamont pulls up the rope and he can see Fred's pants that they rolled up. And then he went out. And then Fred, of course, is pissed. And he's all, busta. All of you, busta. <laughs> so in this episode, you get, uh, like I said, Leroy, Skillet, Julio, you get to learn multiple Spanish words. Oh, man, it's a great learning episode as well as comical episode. So 7.4 in IMBD. Like I said, it's a good one. This is not bottom 20. Definitely not at all. Not top 20. But this is one of the ones where you go, hey, watch side story. Remember, like I said, there is a scene where Fred actually references it and even compares them and says, hey, this is like a, a West, Side story, or West Side story. And and Lamont's like, there's not even that many Puerto Ricans here. Why are you even worried about that? And Fred's like, oh, they'll bring it, ship them here from Harlem. <laughs> so overall, I like the episode a lot. Not a top favorite, but comment below what you think of it. Did you enjoy the episode overall? Is it one of your favorites? Um, 
And thank you for watching. If you got this far, like, subscribe, and watch out. Here we go. Tonight is the night we reveal our final four for the championship as we are going to be done with our best one and done. We will know next week at this time, heck, maybe sooner if it's a landslide, who is voted on our Red G Fox channel, the best ever one and done character. And then I'm going to make a whole review show. We're going to go over top 30 one and done and rank them based on how your votes came in. And it's going to be fun going covering all of it. So there's so much going on in this channel. And I thank everybody who's been a part of it. And I hope you enjoy it, right? If you don't like it, you know, take off, take off, whatever. But I hope even if you don't subscribe, you always come back, watch the videos and partake in the polls because you know what? That, we all love Sanford and Son. That's the biggest thing. That's the whole reason for this channel. So have a great week, and we will see you probably Friday if, if I do an early show Thursday. Who knows? We could have multiple shows again. Just like, go check out the one I just did. Sunday, we had the Friday episode about Esther, how she got to be Aunt Esther. And then we had the Sunday surprise episode I dropped about this semifinal round we just finished up this week. So give those all a watch, and uh, stay tuned for more content. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great week. Peace.